want to do the home sweet haunted home hoop and the eek hoop and I want to do them both at the same time. If you have an embroidery machine that can take a larger hoop, then this might be a way for you to do two designs at one time and maybe save a little time. And I'm gonna show you how to color sort your designs to really minimize your thread changes. So I have Embrilliance Essentials open right here. And if you look down here at the bottom, you can see my hoop is 9 by 14. And if you want to change your hoop, you can come up to the top menu, this little yellow box, and click on it and find the drop down that, click on the drop down that has your machine embroidery file type. And the basic hoops that that machine uses are listed in there. And if it's not, you can always click new and create your own. So I'm just going to hit cancel because I'm going to stay with this 9 by 14 hoop. So I'm going to open up my folder here. Let me back up and get to Candy Corn Quilt Shop. If you want to see how I created this folder and got to all these files on my desktop, then I will link to a video right here that shows you how to do that. That's video number two of this series. Okay, the background quilting design that I need for Home Sweet Haunted Home is block number 26 according to the background quilting guide. So I'm gonna go in here, double click my way into these. And number 26 uses Chevron one, four by four horizontal. So there's Chevron one. Go to PES because I have a brother machine and I'm looking for four by four Chevron one horizontal, that's it. I'm going to click it and drag it into the hoop and I'm just going to grab it and move it up a little bit about here. And then I'm going to go back to my background quilting designs and back up. And let's see, the next one, the Eek hoop is design number 27, which is wavy three, four by four horizontal. So I'm going to scroll down to wavy three and get to four by four horizontal right there and drag it in. It automatically centers in the hoop. So I am going to just move it down here a little bit to give me some room. So these two designs are identical in their thread colors according to the the way the digitizer made them. Let's take a look over here in the object panel and look. So on the 4x4 chevron right up here, the default colors that this comes in is default one blue, two orange, one blue, two orange, 17 turquoise. Same goes for the next one. One blue, two orange, one blue, two orange, and 17 turquoise. All of the background quilting designs are digitized like this with these colors. And that is because they are doing a placement stitch, a tack down, a placement stitch, a tack down. They are always going to be that way. I'm going to click preferred because I have my preferred thread brand in Embrilliance is Isocord Poly. And when I click that, it changed all the thread colors to the isocord. And the reason I did that is because it's going to give me more choices to change the thread colors and create different numbers for what we need. So this is the placement line for the batting, Pacific Blue. And this is the placement line for the batting, Pacific Blue. That's fine. This is 1120 sunset and 1120 sunset. That's fine. Now we're going to get to the placement line for the fabric. And I need this to be a different color so that it doesn't stitch at the same time as this one when we do a color sort. So I'm just going to come down here and click on this chip which opens up a, a whole list of colors for Isocord Poly. 
I do not care what color is chosen. And so just to make it easy on myself, I click the next one underneath the Pacific blue. So I'll choose wave blue and tell it okay. And then in this design, I'm gonna click on this. Again, Pacific blue. Again, remember this is the placement line for the batting, batting tack down, placement line for the fabric. I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna to go to wave blue again and click OK. We don't need the sunsets to be the same, so you're really only ever going to change these last three colors. So on this one, this is a fabric tack down. I want this to be a dark gray because I want it to match the fabric, but I don't want it to be the same color that the background quilting is. So I am going to just come here and type in gray and hit enter, and it's gonna default to slate gray, and I'm gonna tell it okay. And then this one can, uh, I'm just gonna click this and I'm gonna make it the very next color to the orange. Let me make sure, which is pumpkin. And I'm gonna tell it okay. Let me make sure I'm doing that right. Yep. Okay. And then the background stitching, I'm gonna change this color. I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna type in black and we get black chrome, that's fine. I'm gonna tell it okay. And then this one, I need it to be an orange. And I'm just gonna choose dark orange and tell it okay. So what we have done now is we have made all of the placement lines for the batting will stitch at the same time. When we color sort, that's what's gonna happen. Okay, so now I need to bring in the designs. Now that I have formatted the background quilting to be ready to color sort, now I'm gonna bring in the actual embroidery applique designs. So I'm gonna go back here to my files and let me get out of this. I'm gonna go to my embroidery files. And here is the Home Sweet Haunted Home Hoop. I'm gonna bring this one up here and bring it in. I'm just gonna drag it up. We'll center it and everything in a minute. And now I'm gonna do the other one, and that's the Eek Hoop. And I'm gonna grab it and drag it in. And then I will bring it down here. Okay, so now I want to change these. Again, you can see they came in Default one blue, two orange, 12 black, okay? Look like this, the, these are the same. There's a 12 black and a 14 black. I actually want them to be the same black. The reason they're different numbers right here is so that the machine stops in between. But we're gonna play with this a little bit and I'm gonna click preferred again. Let me make sure everything stayed as I wanted it. Yep, okay. So I don't want this to be Pacific blue because I already have a Pacific blue in the background quilting. So this is the placement line for the fabric. I'm gonna click Pacific blue and now I'm gonna choose something blue because I've already used wave blue. I'm gonna choose something blue and tell it okay. And now I'm gonna come down to the next one. Click that and change it to something blue so that they stitch at the same time when we color sort. I'm gonna click the sunset. I already have a sunset. I'm gonna come down here to like old gold and click okay, that's the tack down. And I'm gonna come down to this one. See, we're in the eek hoop. I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna go to old gold. I want those to stitch at the same time. I'm gonna come up here now 
to this black. This is number 20 black. That is the isochord poly number is 20 black. So that is the cross stitch lettering. Let me make sure that this cross stitch lettering is also 20 black and it is. And I also want the spider to be in the same 20 black. So I'm gonna highlight the spider. I'm gonna click on the chip and I'm gonna come to number and I could type in 20, but it's actually right here. I'll tell it okay. So now my spider is also 20 black. This sunset orange, I believe is used somewhere else in here. I'm not, if I recall, there's a 1120 sunset, yes. I don't want that to be 1120 sunset because I don't want it to stitch at the same time as the other 11, or this is 1200 sunset. I'm not comfortable with it. I'm gonna click a different, <laughs> and I'm just gonna choose a different color copper. That will make me happy, and I know that nothing is gonna get uh, muddled in the works here. And we have the cobblestone, 108 cobblestone for the gray on top. Same right here, 1123 caramel and 1123 caramel. That's great. All of the stitches have been renamed in a different color so that the ones that can stitch out at the same time will do so. So now I want to get these so that they are uh, centered where they need to be. I'm going to click this one. I'm gonna hold down the control key. This is the background quilting for Home Sweet Haunted Home and I'm going to hold down the control key and click this, which is the, de the design for home, sweet haunted home, and come up here to the top menu and right below the center in the hoop button, there's this um, alignment and distribute. And I am going to just click this center one here. This is vertical center. Click that and click apply. There we go and close. And now I'm gonna do the same thing here. That's the background quilting and the design for the eek hoop. And I am going to come up to the align and distribute menu button, click vertical center, oh, and horizontal center and click apply. I need to do the same, sorry about that. Let me click this again and do vertical center, horizontal center and click apply, close. There we go. Now I know they're gonna stitch out exactly on top of one another centered where they need to be. Let's take a look. If we were to go uh, file and I'm gonna scroll down here to print preview. And this gives you just an idea of what it's gonna look like if you were to print it. And up here next to the printer, I'm gonna click these buttons where it says next page. That's the page two. So, we have here, you can see the number of stitches, 21 colors, 13 needles it said, but that's 21 color changes, 13 unique colors. So 21 color changes, if we were to do it without color sorting. I'm gonna get out of this by clicking close. And now I want to just, I'm gonna control, hold down the control key and press A to select all and I want to go to utility and color sort. And it will come up and it, it will say, the design has been reduced by eight color changes. Don't click save it, click new view. And that will open a new tab and give you spot where you can check everything and see how it's gonna go. So you can see our two designs have been reduced into one. I'm gonna click the plus sign and let's go through it and take a look. These will highlight the ones that I touch. So here is our placement line for the batting, our tack down for the batting, placement line for the fabric, tack down for the black fabric, and there is my background quilting for the black fabric. This is the tack down line for the orange fabric and the background quilting for the orange fabric. 
You do not want these two to be the same color so that you have an opportunity to get that fabric placed down before the background stitching starts. So don't make them the same color. You can leave them the same color on your machine, but don't leave them the same color on the computer. Okay, so what do we have here? Here is the placement line for the background fabric for the applique. There's the tack down line for the background fabric for the applique. Here is your cross stitch letters and the spider. There is the letters for Sweet Haunted. Here are the tightening screws at the top of the hoops. And there's your final satin stitching around the hoops. That's exactly what we're looking for. Exactly what we're looking for. If you are using a multi-needle, I recommend that you now would go into uh, File and Print Preview and take a look at it again. And you can print it. If you print it, all of these will print out. You want to print this page right here and mark your stops in between your color changes if you need to stop so you know uh, it gives you kind of a road map of how to program your multi-needle and uh, that will help you out a whole lot It'll give you a little visual to help you get that done right okay uh, that's all we need to do for this and so I am gonna print it right now and I'm gonna tell it okay just let it print out and if you are Taking the design to your machine with a USB, you will come up here and go File, Save Stitch File As, and uh, go here and scroll down to where you have your USB drive. I don't have one installed on my computer right now, so I'm going to click Cancel. If you have the Brother Luminaire or the Baby Lock Solaris, I'm going to go to Utility, Send to Solaris XP1, and I'm going to call it Home Sweet Home dash eek and tell it okay and in real time that's how quick it was to send the design to the machine and I'm ready to go over there and get stitching I'm tell it okay